everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Coco and Dolls. We're real people bringing you real reviews, although today we maybe have something slightly different in store for you. So... Do you want me to do the real to real joke? No, that's okay. Okay. So I'm not Dolls. And I'm not Coco. And along the lines of the joke that we had to delete from our first take, <laughs> what are we reviewing today, Dolls? So last night... Uh, we went to see B-52s, and opening for the B-52s, KC and the Sunshine Band. So for our Gen Z listeners, who would those be? <laughs> they are sort of... Nostalgia acts. They're nostalgia acts, but KC and the Sunshine Band is effectively a disco band. Yeah. And B-52s are like punk disco. Like so, party music. Party music. Party punk. Like they were they were sort of punky when they came out. And so we went to see them. And this is a big deal, listener, because this was the first event that Coco has gone to without a mask. I was slightly freaking out. You were freaking out. And we had a great time. So we're here to review that performance. Okay, go for it. How, how did that... No, I went last. I went first last time, so you go first this time. <laughs> this is your band. This is your night. We went to celebrate Coco's birthday, which was a week ago. Which was a week ago for all your cards and listeners. Or liter- <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so Casey and the Sunshine Band opened. Mm-hmm. I believe they did about eight songs. I knew all of them. Mm-hmm. I was very excited. I mean. Basically what you get on these, so this is the B-52's farewell tour because they are all pushing 70. Um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. So, you know, Casey was like, all right, I'm, I'm in and out in 45 minutes. Like that's his contract. You know, he was uh, just doing the greatest hits, which mm-hmm. at this point, how many people really know the deep cuts from... <laughs> From the Casey and the Sunshine Band studio albums from like 1975. I was surprised actually at the number of recognizable songs that he had. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I thought it was like, you know, Get Down Tonight and the other one. And that was it. <laughs> well, please be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be it. And actually, I know, I knew a lot of those songs. So I was pretty impressed. Yeah, they are all on my Spotify. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. because I love disco. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, he was on and off the stage in 45 minutes. And then uh, the B 52s came on. So they had five founding members. They are now down to three members mm-hmm. uh, because Ricky Wilson died in the 80s of AIDS. And then Keith Strickland decided about. 10, 15 years ago, he was going to retire from touring. Mm-hmm. So we're now down to just Cindy Wilson, Kate Pearson, and Fred Schneider. So they did... Uh, the fronting trio. Yeah, they did about an hour and a half, including a three-song encore that mm-hmm. featured somebody in a life-size lock lobster, uh, rock lobster <laughs> costume. Which they did. And we should also remind listener that the last concert we went to... Before the pandemic. Before the pandemic in 2019... Was the B-52s. Was the B-52s, Berlin, and OMD. And the Rock Lobster made an appearance at that concert as yes. well. And you can they, go to my Instagram and you can see photos attesting to this fact on both on both occasions. And the exact same venue too. And almost so, pretty much the same seats. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much. Way up at the top. So the B-52s did a lot of their greatest hits. Like they did Love Shack, they did Rome, they did Debbie Club. They did Rock Lobster. That mm-hmm. was the song that closed the show. Planet Claire. Uh, Planet Claire. They also did some deep cuts from some of their other albums. Uh, they basically said, you know, this is their farewell tour, so they want to do some songs they haven't done in a long time. Mm-hmm. So it was... I, I think there were two songs that I didn't know, and then out of 15 total, and then oh, yeah? there were like a few that it took me like a moment to figure out what it was. And mm-hmm. then I was like, because they only did one song from the Good Stuff album, and I'm very surprised that that was the one that they chose to do. Mm-hmm. But if this is your farewell tour and you've you been around it, for yeah. 50 years, you can do whatever the hell you want. I was so, really surprised when they did a cover version of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. I mean, you know, Fred, like, <laughs> there was a bar, and Jesus <laughs> said, <and laughs> plant it on my lips. And <laughs> Uh, that's totally way, not how Hallelujah, Hallelujah goes. By the way, listener, that did not happen. There were no covers. Which is unfortunate. It was all B-52s. 
which was not unfortunate. No, you were bopping out. I thought I saw you actually singing along to most of the songs. I was very impressed with that. So, uh, what did you think, Dolls? So, Casey and the Sunshine Band were fantastic, <laughs> like, as a as a disco band should be, and they were moving around really good. Casey uh, admittedly had put on some weight. He mentioned that in one of his uh, monologues. I mean, and he's seventy one. He's seventy one, and he said. There's no there's no truth to the rumor that we're going to call the band KFC and the Sunshine Band, <laughs> which I thought was a fantastic joke. I wonder how many times he's made that joke. And he's probably made that joke more than once, but it was great. <laughs> and I was immediately, uh, uh, he had endeared me yes. uh, to him uh, because he had a sense of humor, which is a very rare thing sometimes these days. And he did get cheered for attempting a high kick. Yeah, he so. did try to, like, I, I when he was doing the kicks, I was thinking... You might want to not do that, Casey. Cause like, that's a hernia waiting to yeah, happen. Yeah, you're going to pull a groin, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Step off. And then meanwhile, everybody else around him was like completely like probably 80, you know, maybe 40 years younger than him. Oh, yeah, for realsies. Yeah. <laughs> 40 to 50 years younger than him. All his uh, uh, support band. So I thought they were really good. I was really impressed with them. Same thing as that happened last time. I was impressed with OMD in Berlin, the opening acts for... Uh, for Fred and, and uh, the ladies. Um, and uh, B-52s this time, I I was a little bit more impressed with Fred. Last time around, I was, we were worried about Fred because it seemed like he was going to the green room quite a bit <laughs> and coming back, you know, going to lie down. He's between, got a cold conference on it. <laughs> yeah, between sets, you know, and we were expecting the walker in this uh, particular version, and yes. that would have been, you know, you get everybody gets old, so I'm not making fun of that. It's nah. just kind of like... Uh, I never thought that I would be one of those people who would be going to a nostalgia act because when I was growing up, you know, somebody was like, hey, man, we're going to the Creedence Clearwater Revival show. And it's like, what? Those guys haven't been relevant in 20 years. And then so now here I am doing the same thing, going to the B-52s. Like, when was the last time they had a relevant album? That doesn't really matter because but- they were into entertaining and they were they were good. Really, the reason we did go to this concert is because it's their farewell tour. Like, if... But then he said at the end, he's like, we'll have more shows. Don't worry about it. This is not oh, really farewell. I, I felt like he meant on this tour, not oh, well, that could like be. five years from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this wasn't the last show. This is the last tour. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the way I took it, but I could be wrong. Who knows? Yeah, and the, the... Who knows if he even knows what he was talking about? Right. Like he... he, he, he he, th- so the band was really kind of cutting edge when they came out in the 70s and 80s and they looked really different and they had the beehive hairdos and everything like that and Fred was kind of an interesting looking character but now he just kind of looks like a dentist oh he just like just any kind of guy that you'd see you know looks like not you know no insult to my dentist Dr. Kamarau if he's listening <laughs> I'm sure he is. <laughs> right. But he just kind of looked like a regular guy. He plays the podcast over the speakers in the office. He does. Like, instead of playing like the Light Rock Station, he plays. To get people to fall off. asleep. <laughs> no, that's not where I was going with that. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, he just looks like a regular guy. And also he's wearing, he, last night he was wearing like this jumper thing that was very <laughs> distracting. Like it was kind of like, I likened it to the to the getup that uh, Tom Cruise wore in in. Mission Impossible, where he drops from the ceiling. It looked like it was something on the back, like a harness that he would hook on to the back and he would fly away. But, but it was I like think neon. yours, I think yours was better. With you said it was like one of those cords that little kids wear when they're trying to get away from their parents. Yeah, so he was wearing like a black sweater or button down that had um, kind of like a shoulder ho- holster looking type mm-hmm. thing on, on both, both sides. Of, on both sides, yeah. but they were like neon yellow. And Dalt said it looks like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, and I said. Either it looks like the leash that parents keep their little kids on, like from wandering, you know, too far away, or he's like an old guy in a care home with a walker and he's got his backpack and those are like the backpack straps (laughs) and he's like scooting around. And that really kind of goes with it because they did Whammy Kiss, which I... I like the Whammy album. That's a good album. And I like, uh, I like Whammy Kiss and... You know, he he just kind of screams throughout that, like, gonna plant it on your lips. And I'm like, he's an old man in the care home, like, just randomly <laughs> shouting, like, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. So, yeah. Yeah, it was so. like when uh, when they're playing Love Shack and he's, ye- he's yelling, I can't hear you. And it's like, yeah, you probably can't. <laughs> right. But I will. Let me in. 
I, I will give it to him. He he did seem more animated this time than last time. He like did. last last time, I swear he probably was off the stage for half the show. Well, it's like I said, we were worried about him last time. This time, I wasn't as worried about him. He did disappear a couple of times. Yeah, there were a couple of times when he would go off stage. But there was uh, when Cindy sang "Girl from Ipanema Goes to Greenland," which I was surprised that was the track they chose to do off "Bouncing Off the Satellites." Mm-hmm. Kate left the stage for that as yeah. well because yeah. that's like all Cindy. Yeah. So and she didn't do that in the other show that we saw. Right, like Kate was on stage the whole time yeah. three years ago so well, i was thinking maybe fred was getting cortisone shots or something like that oh maybe yeah. you know in between songs yeah probably yeah so what did you think of the track list overall overall that was good i mean Set you're a, you're a bigger fan than i am uh so i was i was there for the hits <laughs> and uh i got them and i said this to you as we were walking out is like the the guitar in a lot of these songs is so hooky like they're just brilliant guitar and i'm not sure who the guitar guy was at the show but he was not one of the original guys no. um but he was he was really good and he played it up really well and it, it, that was a lot of fun i mean we went to a casino and saw nostalgia so we're officially old but it was <laughs> it was still it was still a good night i thought it was, it was it was good to see you get dressed up and have fun and break away from your everyday life i I feel like I enjoyed last night more than the show we saw three years ago. And I'm not sure if that's because last night was just a better show or if because I I was like really kind of disappointed three years ago. Like, you know, and I, I felt bad for saying that because I that both three years ago and this show were like birthday presents for me. And I didn't want to be like, oh, oh, nothing makes her happy. She's bitching about her birthday present. Oh, you know. That's what I was thinking. Right. So I don't know if it's because last night was just overall a better show, which I actually feel like it was, Mm -hmm. or if it's because I was disappointed three years ago. So I went into last night with low expectations and therefore I was not disappointed. You've you've analyzed this quite clearly. (laughs) Well... I mean, what else are we going to talk about on a, you know, it, this isn't like the 10 part Jeffrey Dahmer show where we have a lot to say. This is like, it know. wasn't a shot. Right. I think you were more prepared for this than I was. So, but no, I do feel like last night was a better show. Like I felt like Fred was more animated. Like he only left the stage a couple times only for like, I think two songs the first time and one or two songs the second time. And, uh, you know, Cindy and Kate are always good. Like they're always, I Kate believe. especially is always talking to the audience. I can't believe their voices are still so good. Like they, they, I don't think they're as nearly as good as when they were first. Right. Obviously, young. Uh huh. That's impossible. But I can't imagine. Like their 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 lungs are really good. They're in really good shape. They're hitting those high notes. Cindy was hitting all the notes in "Girl from Ipanema Goes to Greenland," and I said to Daltz during the show. I bet if you would have told her when she was 28 and yeah. she wrote that song that she was still going to be singing that song in 40 years and still hitting those high notes, yeah. she would have not believed it. But she is. Her her voice sounds great. Her and Kate both. They still have the pipes. I could have done without the recorder in that one song that Fred played. <laughs> it was very shrill. And I, th- I thought maybe one of my eardrums burst, but... Yeah. I mean, how how freaking... I said this in the podcast we did the first time we saw them, and I will say it again. How freaking lucky is Fred? Because he's made a crap ton of money from being in a band, and he doesn't, as far as we're aware, have any discernible musical talent. Like, he can kind of shout on tune, and that's... <laughs> His contributions. Like at one point, it was it in Planet Claire where he was just standing at the mic and every now and then he would hold up a walkie-talkie right. to the mic and like play some static and then lower it. And that was kind of what he did. It's like Fred Schneider on walkie-talkie. Right, totally. Like, how do I get that gig? Right. You know? <laughs> it's like when you see some lead singers and they want to contribute and they're playing the tambourine. Right, like, hello, Liam Gallagher. Yeah, <laughs> like, are you really, is that contributing anything? Like, I don't know, is it? I don't know music well enough, I guess. Maybe maybe you are contributing. Right. Well, what did, uh, isn't that like Bono? Like, he said he just basically held the guitar to, like, look cool, right. but you know, he didn't actually know how to play it, so, right. yeah. There's a lot of guys that do that. A lot of lead singers are just hold an instrument and not, it's not plugged in. Right. Or their amp's not turned on or something <laughs> <Right>. like that. <laughs> That's not why you're here. You know, <laughs> right. unbutton your shirt and, right. you know, accept what you are. Exactly. Roger Daltrey, <laughs> just sing. Although, I don't know if we want Fred to unbutton a shirt. Not that I'm body shaming, but, I mean, you know, you're pushing 70, well, so. Well, do you want your dentist to unbutton a shirt? No. Well, it depends on the dentist. Yeah. Is my dentist Chris Hemsworth? Okay. You're supposed to say. No, nobody unbuttons their shirt but you. Is your dentist you? And then it would be like, yes. 
Yes. Then unbutton your shirt. Right, anyway. So I can't remember what we did last time. Did we recommend or did we give it a rating? Uh, I don't know. That was that was only in like the second year of the podcast. And now we're in year five. Right. So we've grown right. we and evolved grown. since then. So we can make it whatever we want to make it. That's right. Really. That's, that's the beauty of being your own boss. Right. So if somebody, say, listener is out there and thinking, should I go to this show? And actually, uh, I don't think Casey and the Sunshine Band is opening... F- right across the country. I think there's another band. Um, But, so don't be disappointed, in other words, if you don't see Casey and the Sunshine Band on the marquee. Um, But would you recommend this show for hardcore fans, low-core fans, medium-core fans, or just casual 80s fans? I would recommend it for everybody. Wow. The whole family. Yeah, the whole whole family. Well, because, you know, it is their farewell tour. Yeah. So... Unless this is like the Stones who go out on a farewell tour every five years, like there's a good chance you're probably not like going to see him again. Fred's 70, so. Yeah, so they're they're probably done. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a tight ship. I mm-hmm. mean, mm-hmm. you know, from 7.30 to like 10.15, and like we were out of there. <laughs> I know, it so, was great. <laughs> yeah, and there was probably about a half hour between when KC went off. You know, yeah. tw- 20 minutes or so yeah. between when KC went off and when the B-52s came on. It wasn't a crazy amount of time. Yeah, so you can you can still be in bed at a reasonable hour if that's the thing that you're worried about. And they did, even though they did play a, a few tracks that I would have preferred not to hear in favor of other songs that I like better, they did play their big hits. They mm-hmm. did play Love Shack. They did mm-hmm. play Rome. They did play Deadbeat Club. They played Rock Lobster. Mm-hmm. They played... Uh, Planet Claire, like you said, mm-hmm. Dance This Mess Around, Whammy Kiss, you know, so they played their big hits. Hallelujah. Yes. And they also played stuff that if you're a hardcore fan, you know, I, a lot of people have like Cosmic Thing and that's it. You know, mm-hmm. they know the singles and that's it. Mm-hmm. But if you have any of their older albums from the 70s or early 80s, you're definitely going to hear some good nostalgia stuff. So yeah, I would recommend it for everybody. And it's not... I did not purchase the tickets, but I don't believe that they were like $1,000. They so. were not $1,000. <laughs> I can assure you of that. The other thing, too, is, uh, as you hinted at, is it, this is where we are in our lives, where we're going to a show, and the tickets say 7.30, and the show starts at 7.38 or something right. like that. It's not like the shows we used to go to when we were younger, and we are going to see these bands, at least I did, and this, it would say 7.30 on the ticket, and the show wouldn't start till 9.30 or something right, like that. Right, exactly. Like, this is... This is the way it should be. Yeah. <laughs> and you were by far the youngest person in the crowd, by the way. I think that's worth <laughs> noting as well. Which, you know, considering I just turned 46, like, what is that saying? There's a lot of uh, <laughs> male pattern baldness in that crowd. Right. KC was not the only one who enjoys KFC in that crowd. <laughs> Put it that way. I think that's a great band name, KFC and the Sunshine Band. Like. Right. K- KFC and the Taters band. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, so think, w- did you say if you recommend? Well, do I have to? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, this is, you know, a, a two person show. Is, it is. But this was your show, though. We were going to the so show. So you don't for recommend, you. Is, what you, is what you're saying. All right. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not as big a fan of B 52s as you are. Uh, I will say that Casey and the Sunshine Band, for me, having seen B 52s already, Casey and the Sunshine Band were worth the price of admission because who doesn't love that kind of music? And it was just upbeat and it was, Mm -hmm. everybody was into it and the crowd was on its feet. Like they didn't play very many songs, but everybody was standing and dancing around for that kind of, that, I didn't get that same vibe from like there was, for the B-52 set, it was kind of people were sitting down and then they would stand up and then they would sit down. You can't stand obviously for an hour and a half show or whatever it was, but. Well, you can if you're. 20 years younger than we are. Right. <laughs> right. The backs and the knees were starting right, to like, Oh, I don't really love this song. I'm going to sit down in this <laughs> comfortable chair. That's exactly <laughs> what we were doing. I will say I saw fewer people leaving this show than the one oh, we yeah. saw three years ago. Yeah, that's a good point. Like yeah. it seemed like three years ago, there were a lot of people who were just like, yeah, screw this. I'm going to go play craps, you know, but, <laughs> but this time it seemed like most everybody was pretty much sticking around. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, recommend. Yeah, I would recommend for sure. I don't think you do, but that's okay. All right. I'll accept that birthday lie. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks, dear. So uh, for another episode of the podcast, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And for let, 160. Let us know if you want us to review more musical acts 
<laughs> from yesteryear? That is a totally self-serving question on Daltz's part. Yes. So please don't answer that, actually. What? Wait, what? Please don't go. We, we, uh, See, I'm trying to... Look, please don't go. Yeah, I got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, for another episode of the podcast, I'm not Coco. And I'm not Daltz. <laughs>